Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Curtis, and I'm one of the paleontologists here at Fossil Crates. And today I'm here to talk to you about one of my favorite dinosaurs, Anzu wileyi. This amazing creature is known from the late Cretaceous, right up to the end of the dinosaurs. It would have lived with Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops and a host of other creatures. This giant animal, well, giant's relative, but it's 11 feet long and weighed around 600 pounds. What's really cool is there's hints of even larger ones roaming around in the Cretaceous of the Dakotas. It's known from both South and North Dakota. So what is Anzu? It's a kind of oviraptorosaur. If you're thinking you've heard the term, you probably have in everyone's favorite oviraptor. Oviraptor was a dinosaur that was discovered and named in the early 1900s, and it was named Egg Thief because it was thought that Oviraptor, because it was found amongst a nest of eggs, and there's lots of protoceratops that were found nearby, the paleontologists concluded that this animal, this strange meat-eating dinosaur that did not have teeth, very strange, was an egg eater stealing the eggs of protoceratops. Turns out that wasn't the case at all. Uh, we've subsequently learned since the mid-90s, late 90s really, that oviraptor was actually not stealing eggs, but was sitting on top of the eggs. Oviraptors are known to be brooding. They were sitting atop them like modern birds do today. And the oviraptor babies would hatch and they would take care of them, it's believed. So it got a bad name. Now most oviraptors are small. They are up to maybe six feet long, would be a pretty good sized one. We're not going to talk about Gigantoraptor. That is a big beast for another day, the largest oviraptor. But when Anzu was found, it was much larger than these Mongolian oviraptors. And there's a number of oviraptors. There's not just oviraptors. Sitipati comes to mind. There's a, a, quite a diverse group of them. So it's thought that the oviraptors had migrated to North America. And we had some interesting tidbits, some hints of the oviraptors that lived here, like Chirostenotes, um, the Cynagnathus. These Cynagnathidae are these strange toothless animals, but we just had really interesting parts until Anzu. We have most of the skeleton of Anzu, and what an amazing animal. So depending on where you look first, the head comes to mind. Check out that cool crest on top of its head. It's actually paper thin when you look at it front to back. It wasn't using that thing for bashing around or fighting. It seems to have used it for display. And it's reminiscent of the cask on top of a cassowary. And a cassowary is a modern bird that lives on two legs, good sized, and uses it for display. The animal of Anzu, its skull, lacks teeth. When you look up in that mouth and that great big powerful beak, there's no teeth at all. Quite mysterious as to what could it have been doing. No one really knows. We'll come back to what it did at the end of this. So Anzu, if you look in its eyes, you'll see the sclerotic ring, those bones. Now those bones aren't around the eye, those bones are in the eyeball. It's thought that the bones, those sclerotic rings, kept the eyes round and kept them functionally so you don't have the lens moving around. Was it nocturnal? It's hard to say. Uh, many, many reptiles and birds have these sclerotic rings, as do most fish. Uh, funny enough, mammals and crocodiles don't, and those are the skeletons that we are often most familiar with, so these cool eye bones look strange. But nowhere do they ever teach you that those bones are inside the eye. Still creeps me out a little, but fascinates me too. So you look at this gorgeous skull, big crest, probably colorful, huge beak, probably colorful, giant eyes, but look, it's got a big long neck and those hands. So Fossil Crate sells actually this four inch hand claw. This claw is absolutely massive, really wicked and cool. And in life, it would have been covered in a keratinous sheath, like a big fingernail, probably went out to here. And this particular claw was one of three on each hand. And what hands and arms it had. Long, powerful, muscular hands. Clearly doing something. When you look, you see this recurvature, this soup super strong curve. This curve usually occurs on animals that are actively using this every day, predating. If you look at this curve, it looks like the curves on an eagle's talon, for instance, crushing down. So this was being used for something in its day-to-day -day life. But it don't, did not just have big, strong hands. Oh no, it had powerfully large legs. It ended in sharp claws too. Not nearly as large, but still very impressive. 
and it probably had quite a bit of speed that Anzu could generate. So you have this animal with these big hands, huge claws, strong, powerful legs, meat-eating dinosaurs, a member of the theropods, and then it has this tail. And this tail is long and counterbalanced the neck. So when you see animals with this long tail, it suggests that they are very active predators. And it certainly looks, by looking at the skeleton and all of its features, that this is an active animal. It also has a pygostyle. And it, a pygostyle, you find it in birds, and pygostyles have display feathers coming off of it. It probably had display feathers, which is really cool to think about. Here's an animal 11 feet long, much bigger than an ostrich, approaching the size of, an, of a moa or an elephant bird. We know it had feathers. And we also know, using something called phylogenetic bracketing, that it most likely had feathers and brooded its eggs. We know this because the Mongolian oviraptors, they have been found in brooding positions sitting on the nest. Uh, they have been found with very young animals in the nest as well, and trampled eggshell. Trampled eggshell is actually a clue. When you find trampled eggshell in a nest, that means the animal hatched and stayed there a while. You see that with Myasaura and all the tiny little egg fragments in its nests. When an animal like a quail uses its egg tooth, pops out of the egg, and is running around within minutes and takes off out of the nest to follow mom and dad, that animal's egg shell is mostly intact. It didn't trample on it for a number of days. So we believe, though we don't have any egg that's known from Anzu yet, we are pretty confident that the Anzu laid nest and took care of its young, probably sat on top of the nest to help regulate the temperature. So what did Anzu eat? No one really knows. There's been a lot of hypotheses proposed. So let's talk about some of the possibilities. When you think of animals that lack teeth, um, maybe it was eating eggs. That's why Oviraptor was named Egg Thief, in fact, and it is a large Oviraptor. Possible? Maybe so. So eggs or mollusks. It has a powerful bite. When you look at those jaws and the jaw musculature, it can do some pretty powerful cracking. So maybe it cracked open mollusks. Keep in mind, Anzu lived along the shores, or at least has been found along the shores of the Western Interior Seaway. So quite possibly, it was living out there and picking off mollusks. Uh, or maybe it was eating seeds. That big old powerful crunching jaw could have possibly cracked open seeds. And we know there are seeded plants that were alive at the time of Anzu. Eggs, seeds, mollusks, maybe. Maybe it was like a roadrunner or an ostrich running really fast, hunting down small pesky mammals, lizards, other small dinosaurs, using those powerfully long legs to run it down, those massive arms to slash and crash and bash it all up, and then swallowing it whole like birds do today. Definitely a possibility that it was using it to eat meat in a predatory fashion. After all, when those claws are that sharp, you think it's doing something with them. Maybe it used its claws to fish. It lived along the shore. Maybe it slashed fish, kind of like a Spinosaur claw is thought to be used for. And uh, using its speed and its long hands and its big eyesight peering down, grabbing and plucking fish out. That's possible. But here's another idea for this long, cool claw. If you've ever seen the eye eye, which is a really cool primate, it uses a really long specialized finger to drill a hole into a tree and then remove insects. So maybe it was using these to rip open trees and then pluck insects out. It's definitely plausible. It certainly had the power and with these sharp claws, think of almost like a sloth, it could easily rip open a tree and get at whatever's living inside. And the fossil craze paleontologist, we believe that it most likely was using its jaw and its cool claws to eat whatever it wanted within a range. If they saw eggs, sure, why not take them out? If it's on the beach and saw some mollusks, let's eat those too. And, oh, there's a lizard, or I'm gonna run down that little furry mammal. Done. It's really fun to think about what would have happened if the meteorite hadn't hit and wiped out the dinosaurs because it was one of the last dinosaurs and it was a very cool looking animal. So thank you everyone for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed us going into a little bit more detail about Anzu. If you have any questions, please go ahead and email me, brian at fossilcrates.com. Post a comment on our YouTube channel if you happen to be watching this on YouTube. Uh, also, please check out fossilcrates.com because we sell the Anzu claw we sell it by itself, 
and we put it in our famous monsters, the Mesozoic Monsters Crate, where you get other cool animals like Struthiomimus and Displetosaurus and a few other surprises. Thank you kindly. Adios.